One of the most interesting things about Go is its concurrency model. Unlike many other languages where you need to read a 400-page book before getting lost between executors, threads, runnables, volatile values, or synchronization blocks, Go was designed from the ground up to make concurrent programming straightforward and less error-prone. Go routines are probably one of the most elegant ways to handle concurrency in modern programming, and part of their appeal is their simplicity. So in this episode of Syntax Error, we'll explore how Go routines work, why they matter, and what makes them different from the usual thread-based nightmare. Any Go function can become a Go routine by simply adding the Go keyword in front of the function call. But this simplicity is deceptive. When you launch a Go routine, you're not spinning up an entire OS thread. Instead, you are asking the Go runtime to manage a lightweight task for you. These tasks will have tiny stacks attached to them, which can grow and shrink as needed. Compared to OS thread stacks, which are usually sized at 1 MB, Go routines typically start at 2 KB. Since they don't come with the same memory and scheduling overhead you'd get in other languages, Go can run thousands or even millions of goroutines without tanking your system. The runtime multiplexes goroutines across a small number of actual threads, which means you get efficient concurrency without the cost. Under the hood, Go uses a work-stealing scheduler with preemptive scheduling, which means that the runtime can step in and forcefully pause long-running tasks to make room for others, so no single goroutine can hog the CPU forever. But the real concurrency complexity shows up when you are trying to coordinate your tasks. This is when race conditions and deadlocks start to creep in and when one of Go's most important features come into play. Channels are Go's built-in mechanism for communication between Go routines. Instead of sharing memory and trying to protect it with locks, Go encourages a different approach where you don't communicate by sharing memory, you share memory by communicating. One Go routine sends a value into the channel and another receives it synchronously. If the receiver isn't ready, the sender waits. If the sender hasn't sent anything yet, the receiver is the one waiting. This behavior might seem limiting at first, but it's actually one of Go's biggest strengths. It forces a clear linear flow of data between concurrent tasks, which makes programs easier to reason about. You always know where the data is coming from and where it's going. For more complex coordination, select statements allow you to wait on multiple operations and respond to whichever one becomes ready first. This makes it easy to build patterns like timeouts, cancellation, or fan-in fan-out pipelines without building your own event loop or wiring up callbacks. What's more interesting is that channels can also be buffered, which means you can send data without immediately blocking as long as the buffer isn't full. And, for situations when you don't need to pass data around, Go also provides simple constructs which let you wait for a collection of goroutines to finish. But remember that all these mechanisms don't protect you from concurrency issues. If multiple goroutines are accessing the same variable without proper synchronization, you still get race conditions. Go tries to help with tools like the race detector, but it's not a silver bullet. If you like this video, you should check out one of these ones next. Please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, thank you for watching.